I'm Tisha Bader in a special program for Yom HaShoah, Holocaust Martyrs and Heroes Remembrance Day, to remember the six million Jews murdered in the Shoah, the Holocaust. The official state ceremonies for Yom HaShoah will be held on Sunday, May the 5th, and televised from and at Yad Vashem, the World Holocaust Remembrance Center in Jerusalem. And we are so honored to be able to bring you that ceremony for Yom HaShoah, once again live streaming here on JBS on Sunday. Well, to speak with the chairman of Yad Vashem, Dani Dayan, is always a privilege. Dani is a frequent guest on JBS in his previous role as Israel's Consul General to New York and in this current position. And he joins us now from Jerusalem. Dani, thank you so much for being with us. Always good to be with you, Tasha. Thank you. So everything is different this year, Dani. Nothing is the same since October the 7th. And as we pause to remember Yom HaShoah and remember this darkest of times for the Jewish people, this year falling in a very dark time in our present moment, in the aftermath of Hamas's atrocities, how do we begin to navigate Yom HaShoah, what impact has this made on this day that stands out in its in its sanctity? Well, you know, Tisha, something uh, very peculiar, interesting happened. Uh, we decided almost a year ago, long before October 7th, what will be the central theme of uh, this year in the commemoration of the Shoah this year in 2024. And the decision we made then back in, I believe it was May or June 2023, was that the central thing will be a lost world, the destruction of the Jewish communities. Uh, we always obviously refer to the Jewish communities in Europe and Northern Africa. But then October 7th uh, came, and no doubt it came uh, the central theme that we chose uh, for this year, an additional significance because modern communities were also, more modern Jewish communities, contemporary Jewish communities were also devastated. Um, so, you know, uh, in the entire Jewish world, but for sure, even more so in Israel, uh, we are still under uh, the very dark cloud of uh, the events of October 7. And in spite of the fact that uh, the Shoah and October 7 are two completely different uh, uh, events, even though they have some similarities, of course, the cruelty and others, but they are in an historical perspective different. And there is no doubt that uh, uh, this year, the commemoration of Yom HaShoah will be under the heavy uh, uh, cloud of uh, October 7th. I am, uh, we will obviously, uh, we will uh, put the chair for the kidnapped, uh, Israelis, Jews, and others still in captivity in, in Gaza, in the stage, on the stage uh, for the entire public, the entire people to see. And I have no doubt that uh, the events of October 7th will be also reflected in the speeches of President Isaac Herzog and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. It's, um, yeah, it's, as you said, it, it is a dark cloud, certainly. And of course, as you mentioned, with the hostages, now over 200 days in captivity, which is just unfathomable. But that is the reality. Um, just to mention, we're taping this about a week and a half ahead of Yom HaShoah, and that is still the case. Perhaps we can hope and pray for, for better news by the time we get there of some agreement of the release of hostages, but right now that is the situation. If I may add, uh, Teisha, also, uh, Alex Danzig, one of our own in Yad Vashem, an historian of the Holocaust uh, uh, in his 70s, uh, is still in captivity in Gaza, and we pray for his release together with all the other uh, hostages. I'm so sorry, Danny. I did not realize, and I'm thinking of him and his family. It's just uh, very difficult to grasp. And uh, as you said, two very separate historic events, but the the cruelty, um, there is definitely similarity in what has been experienced. 
Let's talk a bit about that theme, which you said you you chose um, almost a year ago about the lost Jewish communities. What sort of is the is the central focus within that theme? What are we looking at? What are we focusing on this year for Yom HaShoah? Well, you know, there's one of the quotes uh, that uh, I adhere most to is one of a Dutch Jewish survivor from the Holocaust that said the famous phrase that uh, the Holocaust was not the murder of six million Jews, but was rather six million assassinations of one Jew each. Mm -hmm. And that's, of course, true. But uh, there is a third part in the puzzle, and that is the devastation of thousands, thousands of Jewish communities all over, all over Europe and Northern Africa. Uh, most, some of them... Uh, the, the, some remnants were uh, survived, uh, some of them relocated to other continents, uh, some of them were rebuilt, uh, especially in big cities, but some of them uh, remain only in uh, the books, in the memorial books that were published about them. And uh, this is a central part, uh, one of the biggest, one of the deepest uh, Apps that the Holocaust, uh, uh, one of the he heaviest prices that the, uh, the Jewish people paid, because we are about communities. Jewish society is, is about the community. And the fact that the glorious communities, famous communities that have given Jewish and human history so much uh, cultural assets, Jewish assets were disappeared from the face of earth, uh, we thought that uh, should be remembered this year. Uh, and it, uh, uh, this is the year in which we will inaugurate uh, in a few months also in our own in, in the Valley of Communities in the outskirts of Yad Vashem campus, a new immersive audiovisual presentation about the values that were central to the Jewish community, mutual responsibility, tradition, learning, uh, yearning for Zion, and the other values that uh, we will commemorate there and learn about them there. So it will be a, a full year in which will be put the Jewish community uh, that was obliterated in the Shoah, the thousands of Jewish communities that were obliterated in the Shoah, we will put, it, put them back center stage. Tell us a bit about the torch lighters that have been chosen uh, this year. Every year Yad Vashem honors six Holocaust survivors who light the torch in memory of and tribute to those lost and also to the survival of the Jewish people. Tell us a bit about who you chose this year. Well, we chose uh, six, as always, six survivors from different areas, from Romania and from Greece and from Libya this time. I think it's the first time a survivor from the infamous Jado uh, concentration camp in Libya uh, will lead uh, uh, one of the torches. Um, most of them, if not all of, all of them, are in their 90s, uh, but uh, still uh, lucid and uh, strong, and they will, we will tell their story, as we always do in very powerful uh, short films. Um, we still uh, have every year uh, close to 200 applications, uh, for uh, uh, lighting the torches of, by survivors. And you know, Tisha, one of the questions that uh, we must start thinking about, it's uh, what will happen uh, when uh, we don't have any more survivors with us. Uh, I hope it will take many years, but inevitably the time will come, who will then lead the torches. And uh, people say to me, uh, second generation, third generation, uh, that's one of the of the uh, uh, possibilities. But I ask myself, does it mean that, for instance, an uh, Ethiopian Jew will never uh, lit a torch in Yad Vashem in Yom Hashoah? I'm not sure that uh, uh, he shouldn't or she shouldn't. So it's a decision that the Jewish people will have to make, uh, I hope, in many years, but we are realistic. How will we remember, memorialize the Shoah uh, uh, in a world devoid of uh, uh, survivors, of witnesses, I'm sure that day is, uh, that I, I'm afraid that will be the happy hour of the neg of the denialists, of the distortionists. Our mission will become much more difficult, but much more important. Absolutely. And let's just talk a bit about what happens in Israel on Yom HaShoah. There are two days or times of year that 
the people of Israel come to a standstill. And if you've lived there and you've been there during this time, it is extremely dramatic and impactful and meaningful. So on Yom HaShoah and Yom HaZikaron, when we remember Israel's fallen in war and terror, and on Yom HaShoah, when we remember the 6 million Jews murdered during the Holocaust, talk a bit about that moment when the siren sounds and no matter what you're doing and who you are, you stand still for a moment of silence. Yeah, you know, I, I wasn't born in Israel. I came to Israel as a teenager. And uh, the first time I experienced that uh, is one of the most powerful experiences uh, you can imagine. First in your show, as you said, then in your Zikaron for the fallen soldiers and victims of terror. Um, yes, I, I personally will be uh, uh, at that moment uh, with President Herzog and Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, in Yad Vashem in the laying wreath ceremony, in the annual uh, wreath laying ceremony. Uh, but uh, the country comes to a complete standstill in the highways, in the schools, in, in, in workplaces, in, in private homes, everywhere. This is uh, one of the most powerful experiences that uh, Israel uh, has. Uh, and, you know, as you said, Tesha, we do it uh, twice a year in Yom HaShoah and Yom HaZikaron. As uh, someone said, uh, Yom HaShoah is the price that commemorates the price we paid for not having a state. And Yom HaZikaron is the price we pay in order to have a state. That is a, a, a very sad, but very, very true statement. Um, and again, just bringing things back to October the 7th, you, you talk about the torch lighters standing there as witnesses and also as symbols of survival that the Jewish people are still here. The Holocaust mm -hmm. happened. We're still here. And the resilience and the strength that we're seeing, that we see from Holocaust survivors, and the resilience and strength we see from the people of Israel today, after what happened on October the 7th, are, are just so incredible to, to see, to feel. We feel it. And it's really we don't want to be in this position of having to be resilient, of having to survive, but this is this is the reality, unfortunately. Yes, indeed, uh, and uh, no doubt that uh, the Holocaust survivors are a source of inspiration for all for all us all uh, during these uh, difficult days. Um, you know, I said that uh, I remember when President Biden came to Yad Vashem in June 2022, and I escorted him from his limousine to the Hall of Remembrance, where all the dignitaries were waiting for him, the president, the prime minister. And I told him, you know, Mr. President, uh, Israel was not established because of the Shoah. Israel was established in spite of the Shoah. But you cannot understand the um, Israeli society, and you cannot understand Israelis without understanding the impact that the Holocaust has, not had us on all of us permanently. And uh, I remember that uh, sentence I told the president in October 7th, because, you know, with all the differences, uh, when we heard over the TV that uh, Simchat Torah, that Shabbat, that uh, uh, mothers are muffling the mouths of their toddlers in order to prevent them from crying and being discovered by the assailants, by the assassins, um, I think the the, the 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 first thought we all had was uh, uh, about uh, those stories we heard about innumerable uh, similar um, um, uh, events in the Shoah, from Anne Frank to to to, to many others. Uh, so yes, I think that the the Shoah is omnipresent in uh, in Israel's individuals and collective mind. You have a new initiative also about um, choosing a, a Holocaust hero or honoring a Holocaust hero. Tell us about that, that happening at Yad Vashem. Yes, you know, there are many types of heroes uh, during the Holocaust. There was a time in, when, uh, in, in which we erroneously uh, thought the Jewish people, the Israeli society, that the only heroes were those that revolted, that took a gun in their arms and in their and hands and, and, and fought for, for dignity, not in order to, to prevail. 
But uh, as we matured, uh, we understood that in the Shoah were innumerable forms of uh, heroism. Um, the the woman in in Auschwitz or in a ghetto or a concentration other concentration camp that uh, made an effort to to remain uh, to put some makeup in her face uh, 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 and, and 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 to 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 keep her human dignity uh, was a hero. Uh, the person that uh, in hiding. Uh, uh, Learn the page of Gamara or, or from her memory, from his memory, uh, uh, challenging the, the desire of the Nazis to uh, eradicate uh, Judaism was a hero. Uh, the children, the, the child that smuggled uh, a loaf of bread uh, to the ghetto was a hero. Um, the person that survived one more day in spite of the design of the Nazis to kill him or her who are heroes. So there are innumerable forms of heroism in the Shoah, and uh, we want to uh, uh, honor all, all, all those forms, um, and we will engage uh, uh, celebrities and personalities in order to launch a campaign to show the myriad of forms of heroism that uh, were in the Shoah, including, of course, uh, the revolts and the partisans, but not limited to them. And Yom HaShoah's mission, I know, is something that you are working at every day, Dani, to preserve the memory and also to educate, to educate against anti-Semitism and to be aware of when we see anti-Semitism rear its head in modern times. And I did want to ask you about what we're seeing as far as the surge in anti-Semitism here in the United States, uh, certainly since October the 7th, we've seen a very high spike. There are reports from the Anti-Defamation League and the American Jewish Committee and just showing how these incidents have risen so dramatically. And of late, we're seeing truly frightening images from college campuses that there's there have been, it's been an issue for a long time, but What's happening now in recent weeks and recent months is truly astonishing and frightening. And I wanted to just ask you about that and how you view what's going on here at places like Columbia and NYU and University of USC and in University of Texas and places like that, places that we hadn't seen uh, such incidents before. Suddenly now it is bursting. Well, you know, Tesha is appalling. You know that I am. Uh, I have a quite intimate knowledge uh, with with uh, uh, higher education uh, university colleges in in the East Coast, especially uh, both as uh, a former consul general of Israel in New York. I spoke. I have spoken in in virtually in all of them, uh, but also as a father of a, a graduate of Columbia University uh, that uh, led. The, the students supporting Israel in that institution, um, what we thought at those times in 2018, 2019, that is terrible, that the BDS referendums, etc., uh, is nothing compared to what we saw uh, later. In I, I visited Columbia and NYU and other universities. I met with the presidents and the top administrators in, in November 20. Uh, 23 after a month after October 7th and I was appalled by what I see but now uh, it's even growing and as I told the presidents of those universities or the then presidents because the president of UPenn resigned since then uh, um, I told her that uh, look uh, it's a it's a cancerous uh, uh, process and if you you didn't stop it at stage one you arrived at stage two uh, and now we are already, I think, in, in stage three. Stage four is terminal. Stage four is terminal, but I believe that this time it will not be terminal for the Jewish people, but it will be terminal for the universities. How do you um, mean? Uh, look, um, uh, uh, the, the, the entire prestige on which these universities are, are, are built will, will collapse. You know, Tisha, there is a, 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 a thought that... Uh, uh, um, academy is immune to bigotry. Well, nothing is further from the truth. Um, the University of Heidelberg in Germany, um, 
the students of that university burn Jewish books in uh, in those in famous bonfires. Uh, they lit another corrupt books, and then the professors, the faculty, developed uh, far-fetched racist theories. Um, uh, and so uh, what is happening now in, in, in Colombia, in Harvard, in other places, is no less uh, bigoted, is uh, a call for the uh, elimination of the Jewish state. Um, that is uh, terrible. Uh, I think that the, 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 the main failure of the presidents of those universities, and we are talking about Colombia specifically, is that they are acting as, as traffic officers. Uh, 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 you can come into the campus, you can, uh, you, they deactivate uh, cards, they call the NYPD, they send back the, the NYPD, uh, but they don't take a moral stand. I expect the presidents of those universities to say, in our campus, calls for the extermination of the only Jewish state in the world are completely acceptable. And the person that calls for that, whether he's faculty, staff, or a student, cannot be part of our community. Unfortunately, they are they deal with technicalities instead of dealing with the moral uh, decadence, with the moral uh, 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 something is deeply rotten in Colombia and those places. And instead of dealing with the causes of that, they deal with the technicalities. If they call for the extermination of Israel politely, then that's that's acceptable for Colombia University. That's the question that we should uh, uh, pose to, to the administrators of the Ivy League University. What would you say, Danny, to the Jewish students who are there who feel in f many of them in fear for their lives, who feel the intimidation, who who just trying to walk across campus are oftentimes confronted with this hate. And even we have heard with some physical incidents as well. Um, what would you say to these Jewish students now? Well, um, you know, uh, Tasha, when I visited the Colombia and NYU and UPenn and others in, in November, uh, the silver lining was uh, my meetings of, with the Jewish uh, students. I found uh, an extremely courageous, an extremely committed, uh, uh, an extremely motivated uh, group of uh, groups of Jewish students in each, students in each university. Um, they uh, really are a source of pride for the Jewish people. Um, you know, uh, they should demand, of course, from from their universities protection uh, uh, of their physical life and 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 and, and, and every think that comes with that. But I told myself uh, when I came back to Israel uh, that, uh, you know, if this, are, if this is the next generation of uh, the leaders of the Jewish community in America, I am confident uh, that we have a, a bright future. I uh, I appreciate the, the positivity and uh, indeed in this whole, uh, the tragedy of October the 7th, that is something also, I, I don't know whether to call it a silver lining, but it does feel as a Jew, wherever you are, but in the United States and, and our, our unity, our strength, our resilience, our solidarity with the people in the state of Israel um, does feel really um, so strong and so united right now. And our pride in being Jewish feels so strong and uh it's not, you don't want I to agree. say, it's, you, you know, it, it's it's perhaps just something that we can acknowledge while acknowledging all the pain and suffering. We also acknowledge the, the beautiful um, unity and solidarity that we feel. Definitely, I agree. I think that uh, we learned that uh, uh, we need cross responsibility. A Jew in Israel should be responsible for the future of Israel and the future of Jewish communities elsewhere. And a Jew in, 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 in the, the diaspora should be uh, responsible for his own community and for the state of Israel. And I believe that this is exactly what is happening now. Danny, as always, we thank you so much for the work you do tirelessly at Yad Vashem to preserve this most important history of our people, the work you do to educate 
about the Holocaust, to remember the Holocaust, to make sure nothing like this ever happens again. And we're so privileged to be able to share the live stream from Yad Vashem with our audience here on JBS. And uh, we will just end with hoping that there are better days coming very soon, that we see the hostages home safely in the immediate future. And our continuing prayer and statement of Am Yisrael Chai. Thank you amen. so much. Thank amen, you so amen. much. Thank you. Danny Dayan, chairman of Yad Vashem. Always an honor to have him here on JBS. And again, you will be able to take part in the live stream from Yad Vashem for Yom HaShoah here on JBS Sunday, May the 5th. Thank you, Danny. Thank you.